In this tutorial, I'll show you how to go from glam to gran. Wait, isn't it supposed to be the other way around? To finish off the little latex series that I've been doing, I thought it'd be cool to show you how to do an aging makeup. I know that latex stretch and stipple technique can be used to age somebody, but I didn't want to go full grandma because it doesn't look as realistic as it could if it's done with just latex. You'd want to use prosthetics for a really extreme age makeup. But with latex stretch and stipple, it's really good for a more subtle age makeup. As always, if you're not familiar with latex and the precautions you need to take, I've got a video about it here. Just be careful about getting it in your hair and be aware of latex allergies. I'm using a latex based product that is specifically formulated for this, Ben Nye's Wrinkle Stipple. You can use basic latex, I'm not sure of all the differences between that and this, but I do know that this one is a bit thinner and it's tinted. The basic premise of stretch and stipple is that you stretch the skin out in specific directions, you stipple on a layer of latex, you blow dry it, and then you powder it, and then you let it go. Don't let go before you powder it or the latex will stick to itself. You can build up multiple layers for a more dramatic effect, but I decided just to do one for mine as I wanted to be more subtle and working with layers tended to make the latex get weirdly bumpy for me so one layer worked best. If you are one of the more observative Freakmo viewers you will notice that there is more than one pair of arms here. Some stretching positions require two hands and then you also need another hand to be able to stipple the latex on and then operate a hairdryer. So if you're doing this on yourself having an extra pair of hands that to help you stretch your face out in the harder positions is really helpful or if you're doing this on somebody else, if you get the model to hold their face for you as you stipple, that's really helpful too. We started with the eyes, doing the inner half first, stretching the eyebrow up and holding the eyelashes down. Then we blow dried it and we powdered it, let it go. Then we moved into the outer half. We stretched the eyebrow up, held the eyelashes down, stippled it, powdered, released it. Make sure you stop below the brows and above the lashes because latex doesn't really play well with body hair. Next, we did the crow's feet area next to the eyes. Then I did under the eyes, stretching my skin and my nose away from my eye. Next we did the outer corner of my lips by stretching out my mouth with my fingers. You can also use something like a tongue compressor in there to stretch out that lip area. Then we did the chin, stretching it either side. Next we did the bottom corners of the mouth, chin area. Then we did the front of the neck, the sides of the neck, the cheeks, the bridge of the nose, the top of the nose and the forehead area, and then we finish with the sides of the forehead and the center of the forehead. Now that the latex part is over, I'm going to start coloring using a fairly neutral medium brown shadow from the Naked palette called Buck. The reason being I want to keep the line work quite subtle and natural looking. I don't want it to go over into the territory of very dramatic theatrical makeup. So by using eyeshadows, it's pretty difficult for me to put down too much pigment and not be able to blend it out. I started placing the shadow under my eyes in the eye bag area following my natural wrinkles and then moved onto the eyelid. Afterwards that I did my forehead copying my frow lines both vertical and horizontal. Next I did my nose, my crow's feet, around the mouth, blending out those shadows with a fluffy blending brush. Then I'm using some cream colours from the Ben Nye Ultimate Effects palette. I mix the pink and the brown and then I put them around my eyelid to weaken the eye area and then I used just the brown very lightly to deepen the wrinkles. I started with my crow's feet, moved onto my nose, I did the forehead, around the cheeks and the lips. I also blended out that colour to soften those lines. Less is more. Next I'm going to take out the colour from other areas of my face to age it so you'll notice an older person doesn't have as much colouring in their lips, in their eyelashes, in their eyebrows, in their hair, in their eyes. So we're going to tone that down a little bit. I'm taking the pink out of my lips by dabbing on some of the white from the Ben Nye Cream palette. And then to take the darkness out of my eyebrows, I used the Skin Illustrator Rice Paper colour and a mascara wand. And then I did my eyelashes with some water activated white face paint and a mascara wand. Then I used the Skin Illustrator rice paper on my hair as well, just around the front of my face and the sides to give it a salt and pepper kind of aging around the front effect. Skin Illustrator do sell a hair aging palette specifically for this purpose, but I don't own it. You can also take the color out of the irises of a pair of contact lenses, but I didn't have any that was suitable for this. I've read that if your latex aging looks a bit too chalky and dry, you can actually put KY jelly over it to take away some of the powderiness, but I haven't tried it yet. Or, you know, this could be another one of my ploys to try and get you guys to rub lube all over your faces. I think I smile too much because the latex around my mouth got a hundred times more wrinkly than anywhere else. Note to self, employ permanent resting bitch face to avoid future wrinkles. Just kidding. I probably should have also done more to my neck and added something to my hands. Now that you've got your older face on, it's time to act like an older person. 
just trying to think, what did my mom do when she was this age? dark kind of fast <laughs> anyway to remove this and shed 30 years off your age here is a weird trick that your doctors don't want you knowing I mean um, I'd recommend using an oil based makeup remover something like isopropyl Muristate is good I'm using bluebed to get it off remover which worked a charm I think this might be my new all-time favorite makeup remover it is tempting just to peel this off your face but if you do you risk really pissing off your skin and I recommend loving your skin instead I started with the top of my forehead and I put some remover on a cotton pad and then I started rubbing the latex downwards until it was rubbing off kind of like shedding dead skin after a bad sunburn I continued this down my face, being careful around my eyes. After I'd gotten all of it off, I decided just to have a shower to shake loose any crumbled old skin left on my face, neck or that fallen onto the rest of my body. Then I used a normal face wash to get off any residue and I moisturized my face to say, hey, thanks for letting me talk to you today. Thanks for watching. This concludes our latex series. I will link other tutorials in the description box and a couple here if you want to check out the rest of the latex ones. And I will start uploading wax focus tutorials next week. Bye for now.